Okay, hi friends, Pamela Shepard with Pamela Shep Productions here. And since today is July 30th, we only have two more days of July, today and tomorrow. And I wanted to do a July and uh, Christmas in July, and so I've got to hurry. But I have this uh, pattern for uh, by Riley Blake Designs. It's free. You can uh, download it off the internet. That's what I did. And it's for a, a half apron, a Christmassy half apron. So I don't have very much Christmas fabric at all. So I have this one that's a Mickey Mouse and a Minnie Mouse. Um, and then, see there's Minnie with her eyelashes and there's Mickey. So what I thought I would do for the for the pattern is I would use this for the top ruffle, this for the middle ruffle, Let me turn it this way a bit, and this for the bottom ruffle. And then I thought I would use this um, polka dot. No, I think I'm mixed up. I decided to do this for the bottom ruffle, this for the middle ruffle, this for the top ruffle, and this for the waistband and the tie. I think that's going to be perfect. I really do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut them out. We're going to follow the directions and cut out for the ruffles and what we need. I did iron one piece that was so wrinkled. And so let's see what the pattern tells us to do and we're going to get started. This might be a long video. I'll fast forward parts of it, but I really want to do this. So, okay. So what it tells us, we need a fourth of a yard for the top, half a yard for the middle, a uh, half a yard for the bottom and the base, and a half a yard for the waistband. The print one, which is going to be for the top ruffle. So it tells me that I need uh, to cut one piece six and an eighth inch by 42 and a half for the top ruffle. Okay, I'm barely going to go over... Um, there we go, this line right here. And I'm going to run this along the bottom so it's even. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to cut on that line and get us a nice clean edge. Now I'm going to barely have enough so I might scoot it over so we don't lose so much because I'm barely going to be wide enough I think. Okay, so we're going to cut it there and there. All right, so that's we're going to turn it this way now because I'm right-handed and I need to cut from this side over here. And it said for us to cut it um, how many inches? Let's look again. Six and an eighth. Okay. So we're going to line this up perfectly. Let's see if you can see on this line. not as long so we're going to come over six and an eighth so we're going to line this up perfectly okay one two three four five six and okay so that's a fourth oh that's not this is barely long enough I'm going to use this one okay so six and this is a quarter, a half, and three quarters. So I think what I'm going to do is cut it for right this minute, six and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's six and a quarter. I think that's what I'm going to do to start with, okay? Okay, so that's for our first ruffle, print number one. Now I bought myself these little, let me see where I put them. I bought these so that I could uh, label my um, fabric. Um, these, these are one, two, three ABCs. So I'm gonna get these out so I can use these. I bought them on Amazon 
and our oh one two three 2, 3 is on the other side. There's a 3. Uh, probably A would be... No, A is A. Oh, there's a 1. No, they're just numbers or letters. And there's a 2. And there's a... And I need a 4. 2, 3... Okay, so let me take these and put them back in the bag and okay, put those over here. I'm going to get one of my my um, design boards that I made and I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to put number one on that. That's going to be the top ruffle. Okay, so we're going to set that over here. Then number two, we're planning to... Now, number two, it says to make... Let's look here. Because the number two, um, we're supposed to cut one piece six inches by 28 and a half for the top base piece and one piece five and three fourths by 42 and a half. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be the middle one. Okay. So we're going to open this up. And first of all, we're supposed to do, uh, let's do the, let's do the long one first. The five and three fourths by 42 and a half for the bottom. Okay. Going to get a nice little straight edge going on. Okay, just barely need to go over that. We're going to that line to that line. We're going to make a straight edge. Now we're going to go the opposite direction and we need to do five and three fourths by 42 and a half. Okay, let's do it this way. All right, baby. My dog's wanting something. What do you want? What? You need to go potty? One, two, three, four, five, and three fourths. Okay, so we're going to come. One, two, three, four, five, and three fourths. Okay. Okay, you need to go outside? Want to go outside, huh? Okay, okay, I'll take you. Hang on. Okay, so here's five and three fourths. All right, so this is number two. I don't have the length of it ready yet. And then it needs another one that's, let's see, five and three-fourths, and then one that's six inches. So we'll do the same thing. Uh, let me let her out, and I'll be right back. Uh, six inches by 28 and a half. Okay, so we're going to come across here. Put it where you can see it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know they say measure twice, cut once. That's even. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're going to do this six inches. And then the width of it is supposed to be, let's move this over. And we finished with this one, so for right now we'll move this over. And we're supposed to make this one uh, 6 inches by 28 and a half. That's not right. Half of 28 is 14. So it's 14 and a quarter. So 14 and 14 is 28 and a quarter makes half. So it's 14. Goodness sake. Okay, this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and a quarter is right exactly, right exactly here, 14 and a quarter. So that makes 28 and a half. So there's our 6 by 28 and a half. So so 21 and a quarter 
is 42 and a half, right? Yep. Okay. So we're going to do the quarter and the quarter. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is the long one, and this one is the short one of number two. Now, number three. Print three is five and a half by twenty-eight and a half for the bottom base, and five and three quarters by forty-two and a half for the bottom ruffle. Now, so it's supposed to be. This is for the bottom ruffle. So we're, it's supposed to be forty-two and a half inches long by five and three quarters. We totally have that. Five and three fourths. So right there is five and three fourths. And we're going to count it again. One, two, three, four, five, and three fourths. I'm going to look at my pattern. Five and three fourths by 42. Okay, so we're going to cut five and three fourths. Okay, so I can put all of this away. So this would be the number three long piece. There's number three long piece for the ruffle. So there's number three, long piece, and 28 and a half. Okay, so here's the half mark on both of those. And we're going to cut that. Okay, we'll put this away over here with the other stuff. And then what we're going to do is fold it up because we are supposed to only have this five and a half. Remember I made it five and three quarters because I cut the big one with it. So this has got to have a little bit off of this width. So we're going to fold it two times and both of those edges are straight. So we're going to line it up and it's supposed to be five and a half. Okay. bottom ruffle. We got to do the waistband now. So for the waistband we're supposed to do 3 and 7 eighths by 28 for actual waistband and then we'll cut for the ties. So let's cut the waistband. So put it just barely over the line. We're going to line up the fold at the bottom because it's straight. And we're going to go over the line just a smidge. There we go. All right. So we're going to cut this line and get us a nice clean edge. All right. Now we're going to take and put it at the other side because I'm right-handed. Three and seven eighths. Goodness. Okay. So we're going to do it like this, and then we'll do the length of it. So we're going to do three and seven eighths. One, two, three and seven eighths. Let's mark it with a Frixon pen that irons off. Okay, so this is the line we want right here. And we're going to cut that. So this is actually the waistband. And how long is it supposed to be? 28 inches. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, but didn't they have a little more with it? No, it was just 28 inches even, Stephen. Okay. We're going to measure twice and cut once, right? That's the way to go. Saves lots of problems down the road. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Because 14 plus 14 is 28. So here's our line. I'm going to make sure that the fabric is right on the end, which it is perfectly on the end. And that is perfect right there. Okay. All right. So this is our waistband. So this is number four. Now for these ties, you're supposed to do those three inches by 36 and a half, and I'm supposed to cut two of those because you have a tie on each side. So three inches by 36 and a half. Okay, one, two, three. And then, okay. Okay, so 
So there's the two pieces for the ties. I'm going to set this fabric aside. And these are supposed to both be 36 inches long. Yeah, so it's 18 and a quarter is what it should be. Gosh, you gotta, you always wonder, you know, what did I do all the math for? <laughs> Alright, so these are the ties that go with the waistband. So those are all number fours. Okay, so what we're going to do, now that we've got everything cut, we're good. So it says to do the assembly, we're supposed to turn under the sides and bottom edges of all three ruffle pieces a quarter of an inch and then a quarter of an inch again and then we're supposed to top stitch on them so i'm going to i have this um i bought this deal that you can iron on and i've not used it yet but um there's the quarter of an inch you put this under your fabric and iron it down to that and this is the kind of fabric, this is from Clover, and you can iron on it. So I'm going to try it with this. I've never really used it before. So let me see about moving um, camera over there for you to watch. Okay? Come on. Fourth of an inch. And a fourth of an inch. I'm betting this light all over the place. Let me just see if I can get it out of the way, maybe. There we go. I'll end it. There, okay. Okay, so there's a fourth. And then they want you to do a whole nother fourth, but we're gonna go down this side. And we're gonna work on, I, this is kind of amazing. I, I saw somebody use this. I wish I could remember who it was and I would tell you. Um, gosh. You know, I watch so many way cool videos and it's really hard to remember exactly who does what. There's so many talented people on the internet. Okay, so there's a fourth. Yeah, this is a, a by Clover and yeah, you can iron right on top of it. I thought, wow, that's cool. I almost wonder if I should put a little, I've got steam in here, but I'm wondering if I should spray a little starch or when I get it down, if I should put a little bit of fabric glue. I don't know. Okay, so that's a fourth. All right. I wonder if I can guess a fourth. I used to just guess a fourth pretty good. Let me see. But you know, you get off a little. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Okay, all right. Now what they really want us to do is go back and do it another fourth. Well, that way we can just double what we have and then we're supposed to top stitch it. So if we can get the first fourth, we're good. Okay, I've decided to use white thread in my bobbin and white thread on top. I think it'll go fine with all of it. And um, I'm using a superior top stitch 70, 10 needle, but I very often mostly use titanium coated superior needles. They have the different sizes in here. You can use any needle you think is best for you. Okay, so it's this fourth inch uh, foot and it has this little blade on it that holds it right along the edge. And then what you do is you'll just barely uh, come across the edge of that one. So let's see if we can make that good. Otherwise, I have one that does only an eighth of an inch. Um, but And this says when you're doing this to backstitch at each end. I'm going to go back and then I go forward. Okay, so we're going to go along. You can see what I'm doing. I can't tell the way the camera is set up. I'll hope I hope I'll look. Okay. 
I'm going to stop it so we can look at the back and make sure that it's catching it. And it totally is. It totally is. Okay? Here's what I was talking about as far as the glue. So I did this side and, um, I, you know, I ironed down the first one and then you would just barely touch it. Just barely. You don't hardly need any. This is that uh, Roxanne glue based. There's several different kinds you can use. And then you just, oops, see I got a little too much there. Just go and iron it down like that and then you have it. Okay, so we're supposed to run a basting stitch along the top of three ruffle pieces at 3 8 inch and 5 8 inch. Okay, so then we're going to look Go pull it so we can get a little bit more thread. And then what happens is, I think I'll take it to the other camera, but you pull it and you cause your ruffle to ruffle up to the length of um, the back piece. So let's go over to the other camera. Okay, so as you can see, I've sewn the basting stitch about 3 8 and about 5 8 just about that far apart. It reaches 27 inches. So we want to keep it even. Yeah. We want there to be ruffle in this section as well. Okay. So this should be 27 inches. The base pieces are supposed to be turned over and sewn. We forgot that part. So let's go do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so this is the base for number three, the bottom ruffle. This is the bottom ruffle. They want us to take and turn it right sides together on the bottom. And this is the top. Remember, this is the bottom. This is the bottom. Either one's the bottom, but this one's the bottom. We're going to take and put along there. And it's going to equal the, they call this up here the base. I'm just going to equal the base. Use a 5 8 inch seam allowance unless it's stated, oops, unless it's stated otherwise. So we're going to use a 5 8 inch seam. A lot of times when you're using, when you're doing clothing or, you know, things like that, you use 5 8 inch seam. When you're doing quilting and stuff, you tend to use a quarter inch seam. So we're going to use a 5 8 inch seam, and then we're going to zigzag the very end of it. Okay, so I'll show you that over at the machine. I have a line right here, and my needle's going to be in the middle, so that's a true 5 eighths inch seam, seam that I want to uh, to use. Once you start going to do a reverse seam, I'm at both ends. So there's 5 eighths. I'm going to follow. I'm going to follow that line. Okay. Now it says to go back and do a zigzag stitch over the raw edge. Okay, now that we sewed this ruffle on the base, it says take the second ruffle, the one that's supposed to be in the middle, and put it on the top of this base, bow all the sides up, 
So we're supposed to go across here, and I've uh, gathered it to where it, it is the exact same size. So I'm going to go baste stitch this, probably a quarter of an inch, just so it stays, and I'll be right back. Show you. See, 1-08, that's my baste stitch on my SE1900 Brother machine, okay? is to take the next piece and put it on top right sides together so we're going to go over here and we're going to put this here we're going to go along we're going to pin it all the way we're going to do a 5 8 inch seam just like we did on the other one and after we do the 5 8 inch seam we're going to go back and zigzag right along the raw edge. Okay, so I'm going to go sew this 5 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to, is that even? Then I'm going to zigzag the raw edge. Do zigzag the raw edge. Okay. Okay, so we do the same thing again. We take the number one ruffle and we put it on top. And we're going to do a basting stitch. That's the word I couldn't think of for nothing. We're going to baste this along here. Really super cute. Really, really cute. It's adorable. I love these ruffles. I would imagine the next thing we're going to do is put the waistband on what you think, right? <laughs> we're going to baste this on just like we did the other. The shortest one was the waistband. The two long ones are the ties. So this must be a tie. And this is a tie. Yeah, so we'll set those back over there. And here's the waistband. Okay, so we turn it all upside down. So the very front of the apron is on the bottom. When we take the waistband, part that's not been sewn yet, and we're going to put this, okay, so we've got all these pieces together. So let's go get that sewn. We're going to do a 5 8 inch seam, okay? Okay, so then you bring it back over to the front and you pin it. Uh, what I'm doing is taking my hem... Okay, you'll want to make a tapered edge at the end of your tie, so you'll stitch it uh, across like that. Then you'll take it on down all along the entire side of both ties. Each tie gets a quarter of an inch all the way down, and then you'll turn that inside out, and then you'll uh, press it and have your tie ready for each side of your apron. I don't think I was even showing you that, but what I was showing you was that I took the, I have this metal chopstick, but you can use whatever, and I hold it along the edge where the seam is, and then I iron along the seam so it's nice, and I don't know if I was, I told you, but I take this big, um, straw that came off of one of the water bottles and I shove it all the way down to the bottom when it's inside out and then I shove the uh, 
metal uh, chopstick through it and that's how I pull it right side out and it works so fast and so easy. I bought one of these but honestly I guess I've just got to watch a video because I can't quite figure exactly how to do it. So this works so fast and easy just a homemade I knew I knew something would work better than just trying to sit there and pick it with your fingers. So that worked out fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna get the uh, get this over there by the apron, and we'll pin it in, and we're gonna sew the waistband, and we're done. We're done with Christmas in July. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I have this orophil, red orophil. I'm gonna fill a bobbin really quick. So I'm gonna use the, this on top and this red on the bottom, and then we'll start sewing.